Hi drummers, my name's Rob Litton from drumsaword.com and in this free video drum lesson what I've got for you is a compilation of what I think are the top 10 easiest drum beats to learn for beginners. Not only the easiest, but also the most popular. What I do over at drumsaword.com and I've been doing it for over a decade now is I transcribe and then teach songs, full songs from start to finish. I teach you every single note. And so over the years of doing that, what I've discovered is that there are really only sort of 10 drum beats that you find in song after song after song, especially pop music, rock music. And that when I was teaching privately, I still do a little bit of teaching privately, but back in the day, I would teach my students these 10 drum beats and expect them to be able to play them confidently and, 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 and well. And that by doing that, what they've done is they've set up the perfect foundation for their playing to be then to move on to play more advanced drum beats. Not only do you find these basic drum beats in lots and lots of popular songs, but then you can also um, add to them and take things away and you'll be able to find combinations that, that give you drum beats to other famous and popular songs. So what I'm trying to say is that these really are your foundational beats and by learning them you're setting yourself up perfectly for the future. So what I've got for you are two um, PDF sheets that come with this lesson. You can find the link beneath this video showing you these 10 drum beats and I highly recommend that you just work on these 10 and mix them up and learn how to go from one to the other and I promise you if you get really good at these beats there won't be a song out there, apart from perhaps the more advanced songs which you need to work on over the years, that you won't be able to play. You'll be able to play pretty much any song you hear on the radio using one of these beats or combination of these beats. So without further ado, let's get on with the lesson, but don't forget to download the free PDF that comes with this lesson. And that while you're there, what I've also got for you on that same page, which you'll find the link for beneath, beneath this video, is also a little 90 minutes free video session teaching you how to read music. And then if you want to, you can also sign up to my free email lessons where I give you loads and loads of extra free stuff, including five full uh, song lessons where I teach you a song from start to finish. But you can find out all the details below. In the meantime, like I say, let's crack on with the first drum beat. So before we go on to our first drum beat, let me just explain very, very briefly a little bit about the structure of the lesson itself. For each variation of the drum beat, what I've got for you are two different versions. And really the only difference between those two versions is what the right hand is doing on the hi-hat. Remember the right hand can play on the ride cymbal or it could play on the floor tom. If you're a beginner drummer, you might want to explore trying to play your right hand on different surfaces because it's going to feel strange. But really we've only got two kind of rhythms that the right hand's going to play, quarter notes and eighth notes. Quarter notes, you're playing one note per beat. So if we've got a, a, temp, a metronome going by like this, we're gonna play in time with the hi-hats. One, two, three. They're quarter notes. There's four to a bar. One, two, three, four. The eighth note versions is just twice as fast. We're playing twice as many notes. Eighth notes, there's eight of them. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and. Don't worry about the counting too much. The difference between the two rhythms, the right hand playing quarter notes and eighth notes. Just hear the difference between the two. We've got one going by like this and we've got one by going, going by like that. Double the rhythm. And by having those two different right hand patterns and learning the same bass drum, snare drum pattern underneath, you're gonna give yourself the tool to be able to play different tempo of songs. So if the song's really fast, you'll play quarter notes with the right hands. If it's really slow, then you might play eighth notes with the right hand to fill in more of the space. So you're giving yourself more options. The snare drum for each example is on beats two and four. It's called the back beat, you know, where you clap one, two, three, four. That really very rarely changes in, in most music. Drum beats tend to have that snare drum on beats two and four. The thing that does vary the most, and for each example varies, it's the bass drum. And the bass drum follows the melody of the song, usually the bass guitar or the, or the guitarist, something in the song that attracts the bass drum the melody, and so the bass drum follows that part. So for each of these drum beats, examples, it's the bass drum that varies, and that's the most important thing. As a drummer, you'll learn that really what you're doing most of the time is you're playing with the bass drum. Your right hand, your snare drum is playing something repeating, an ostinato it's called, and your bass drum is following the melody. The right hand and snare drum there were playing exactly the same thing. The bass drum was following a melody in my head that I was making up. So with each of these examples, bear that in mind, it's the bass drum you're really looking at here. 
You've got the two different right hand versions, quarter notes and eighth notes to give you options for tempo later on, but also then also for musical taste as well. You might choose to play a different right hand pattern depending on what sounds cooler to you. And what I highly recommend you do with these is you try to mix them up. That's the most important thing. Once you've got these, take two examples, two drum beats, and put them next to each other and try playing them one after the other. So for example, we might have, as we're gonna see later in the lesson, we might have drum beats, uh, let's say four and five. I'm gonna play them as a two bar loop. So four and five. One, two, three and four, and one, two and three and four. One, two, three and four, and one, two and three and four. I just, take, I just took beats four and five, I put them next to each other and I looped them. Don't worry about looping the different, um, right hand patterns, even though I'm gonna show you in my examples where I do do that, I go from the quarter notes to the eighth notes, that's really useful as well. Most of the time though, your right hand's gonna be staying the same and it's the bass drum that's gonna be varying it up. So think about doing both ways, but the most important thing is to try and loop two bars examples with the same right hand pattern, but different bass drum patterns. And then you can try loops of four, four different drum beats, etc., etc. And hopefully you'll start to hear these in songs as well. Once you've sort of learned them, you'll recognize them in songs. Ah, that's that one, that's, ah, now I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully you'll be able to start recognizing them in songs as well. So let's get on to our first drum beat. Like I said, each drum beat, I'm gonna show you the quarter note version. So here we go, really, really obvious stuff, this. You've, you've, you've probably even learned this, even if you're just new to drums today, you've probably, you probably recognize this as, as or, or be able to play this already, but I thought I'd just show you it just to make sure it's just nice and clear. So quarter notes on the hi-hats, bass drum on beats one and three, snare drum on beats two and four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and. And whenever you play these quarter note versions, I highly recommend you count the full eighth notes. That's the ands in between each beats. One and two and three and four and. That way you're gonna fill the gaps in between the right hand, because later on we're gonna to start to play stuff in between the right hand. So you need to be able to fill those notes in between what you're, what you're playing. And the easiest way to do that is to start, sort of start counting it. One and two and three and four and. Really simple stuff. The next version is the eighth note version where we're gonna count and play all the notes we're counting. One and two and three and four and. Exactly the same thing, we just put an extra hi-hat note in between there on the ands of each beat. One and two and three and four and. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two for the quarter note version and the eighth note version, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Let's hear what those two examples sound like. I'll play four of the first bar, four of the second bar with a metronome. Again, I highly recommend you try and practice these with a metronome, but playing along to music would be more fun, I guess. If you, if you can find a song that has these beats and playing along to the song itself would be a, a great fun way to practice these. But if you haven't, try to use a metronome, or at least if you haven't got a metronome, count out loud while you're playing. But anyway, here's what those two drum beats sound like played up to speed to a metronome. Let's say 120 BPM, sort of an average sort of tempo. Here we go. So our next example is exactly the same as the first, except we're adding an extra bass drum note to the end of beat three, sort of pushing into the snare drum on beat four. We get this kind of effect. Well, we get this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and. So you can see already we're starting to put a note in between the right hand there on three and four. Notice that and a three there, the bass drum falls in between what the right hand is doing. So a little bit of independence there. One, two, three, and four. It's a very common rhythm that where you're pushing into the snare drum, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat. Let's go to the eighth note version. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. And let's hear what those two sound like played at 120 BPM.
So for the next drum beat, we got the opposite effect of beat two, where we're pushing into the snare drum. This one feels like we're dragging after the snare drum. It's a different effect. Let me just play it for you. We get this. And notice the bass drum on the and of two falls in between the hi-hats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Feel free to move your right hand around the kit as well. Play on the right cymbal perhaps. Floor tom. And of course the hi-hat if you want to. Let's play the eighth note version now. One and two and three. But it is important to try and play on some different surfaces. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And with a metronome up to speed. So for beats two and three, we had two effects, pushing into the snare drum, pushing away, or dragging away from the snare drum, if you like. This next example sort of combines the two. We could have had the extra bass drum notes at the beginning of the bar, but I've written it at the end of the bar instead. It doesn't really matter. Let me just play it for you. You can hear the combination of those two drum beats, beats two and three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two, three and four, and one, two, three and four, and one. So you can, you can sort of see there where you've got the three and into the snare drum and then the and one falling out of the snare drum. And we've got two bass drum notes there falling in between the hi-hats on the and of three and the and of four. So look out for that. The eighth note version sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four and one. At this stage, you might want to try and play, let's say, um, two bars of beat two, two bars of beat three, and then two bars of beat four. Beat one's kind of sort of a given. You, you, you should be pretty comfortable by, with that. Let's take this, let those, those three uh, drum beats then. So two of two, two of three, two of four. One, two, three, four. One, two. The next one. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. Next one. Two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. So that was just, a, just a, an aside showing you how you can sort of combine these things. Let's hear what beat four sounds like play with a metronome at 120. So we're starting to get a little bit complicated now. It's gonna to start to feel a little bit weird for you. We've got bass drums falling on their own in between hi-hats with nothing leading into the next hi-hat note. So it's just sort of just playing a bass drum in the middle of the hi-hat, which might feel a little bit weird for you when you first start. So this is a really common rhythm, this, falling on the and of two and the and of three. We get this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You can see a lot of independence there going on between the right hand and the bass drum. That's a really good one, really useful drum beat to learn that. The eighth note version, one and two and three and four and 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 one. And by the way, I just suddenly remembered something with the counting out loud thing. When I used to teach um, drummers, I found that um, the, the really good students would be counting out loud, brilliant, but then they couldn't play the drum beats without counting out loud after a while. So once you're really, really good at it, you've got it in your head, you don't have to be counting out loud. In fact, I recommend you stop counting out loud once you've got it, because you don't want to become dependent on having to count out loud when you're playing a beat. And you'd be surprised how some drummers they learn it that way and then they can't do it any other way. So try to make sure that you don't become dependent on having to count out loud. And you know, once you've got the rhythm, the counting is there just to help you to learn it. Once you've got it, you don't have to count. You'll probably just feel it in your head. So just bear that in mind as well. Okay, let's hear what those two sound like with a metronome.
So onto page two of the, of the uh, free PDF and beat six. And some people might feel this is going backwards in a way, becoming more simple, uh, should be near the beginning of the list perhaps. By the way, this list is, isn't in any particular order of difficulty. They're uh, just sort of the ones that come to my head first of all, and then the, the, the well, you'll see the later ones are a little bit more complicated than the first ones, but the, say the first eight or so aren't in any particular order of difficulty. But anyway, this might seem quite simple because we're going back to a simple bass drum pattern, but actually it's really important that you learn how to play the bass drum with the snare drum at the same time. So this is called playing four on the floor, and it's sort of common sense why perhaps, you can perhaps understand why we're playing four bass drum notes on the floor, bass drums on the floor one and two and three and four over the top of our hi-hat snare drum pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And some drummers might find this really easy or actually really hard because they're having to line up the bass drum and the snare drum at the same time. Boom, 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 boom. The eighth note version, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and these kind of rhythms are really good for a sort of a rocky or a dance effect. So perhaps learn practice going from four on the floor and then just to beats one and three, like this for example. And then back. So you get used to taking that bass drum out and putting it back in with the snare drum. Good, luck, good, good, um, good way of practicing it. So let's hear what uh, beat six sounds like with the mech. So B7 is an interesting one, just like we had with the first page where we had bass drums playing three and four, or two and three, going into the snare drum, going away from the snare drum. This is the same effect, but only using one bass drum. And these are this is a really cool uh, drum beat. This I hear this in loads and loads of songs. Kind of a funky sort of rhythm. This where we're pushing into the snare drum with just one bass drum note on the and a beat three. It could have been on the and a beat two, but this is the most common way I see it or hear it in recordings. So we've got this quarter note version, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Might start to recognize it. With the eighth notes, three and four and one, three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three and four. And let's hear it with the metronome. So just as we had a bass drum pushing into the snare drum, of course we're gonna have an example where it's pulling away from the snare drum. So for this example, I've put the single bass drum on the and of beat two. This is sort of the opposite of beat seven. So we get this effect. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. And the eighth note version, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And just like the first page, these two drum beats, beat seven and eight, are kind of sort of the opposites of each other. So these, these would be two great beats to put together. So let's put uh, beat seven and eight together. Let's play the quarter note version. One and two and three and four. Let's play two of each. Three and four and one and two and three, four. I've changed it, one. And back to eight, uh, seven, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and eight, and three, four, one, two, and three. And without me talking. So you can sort of hear how useful that is to be able to play those two different variations and get comfortable playing those two different types of bass drum patterns. Let's hear beat eight played up to speed with the metronome. So 
for these last two drum beats, I wanted to sort of play around with the snare drum a little bit, give you a little introduction into what the snare drum can do. The snare drum is probably the um, uh, least important thing to vary when you first start, because for most songs, like I said at the beginning of this video, the snare drum back beats on beats two and four. Most of the time, 95% of the time, that's all it's doing. But you do get some songs where the, ba the snare drum starts to add extra notes or starts to vary up a little bit. So for these last two, I've given you two very, very common ideas used in music, where for this one, we're playing the double snare drum, either on two and or four and. And for this example, I've written it on four and. It could have been two and. And we've just got two bass drums leading into it. So the bass drum could have been anything. But this example, we've got this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So we've got bass drum and snare drum falling in between and on the right hand, keeping this steady and lining it up with the rest of your body. Two, three, and four, and one. 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 Two, three, and four, and. and if you want to challenge yourself, this is a great idea. Take that four and pattern on the snare drum and mix it up with different bass drum patterns. So let's take uh, beat eight, that bass drum pattern, and put the four and double snare drum at the end. One, two, and three. Four, and one, two, and three. And so all of a sudden you've got a brand new drum beat to practice. But back to beat nine, let's play the eighth note version now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And let's hear it with the metronome. This last drum beat is just on the cusp of being a beginner drum beat, but it's so popular that I really wanted to include it. And it's also like a sneak preview of where you can go with this kind of stuff, where you can sort of improvise with the snare drum and bass drum. So what we got here is an extra snare drum back beat note falling on the uh of beat two. Now I'm not gonna to go too much into detail about 16th notes at this stage. Don't worry about that too much. Just understand if we look at beat 10 for the eighth note version, that when you've got an uh of something, it falls just before one or two or three or four. In this case, it's falling just before beat three, and it falls in between the hi-hats on the and of two and three, in this case. The uh of two would fall in between the hi-hats on the and of two and three. So let's start with that, because that's the easier version to sort of line up. Just like we had bass drums falling exactly in between the right hands when we we're playing quarter notes with the right hand. With this extra snare drum note, we've got the snare drum falling exactly in between the hands if we're playing eighth notes. So let me just play it for you. The eighth note version first. One and two and a three and four. I've just played the extra bass drums there on three and. It could have been any bass drum pattern. The most important part here is that snare drum. One and two and a three and a three and four. Make sure it falls exactly in between the hi-hat and it'll sound correct. When you speed it up, you can sort of hear the, the rhythm then. It's boom, ba, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom, ba. One, two, a three. Really take your time with this one. And make sure you're comfortable lining up that hi-hat and snare drum pattern um, accurately. When we go to the quarter note version, you need to really sort of hear it, unless you're good at counting these more advanced rhythms, so I'm just gonna play it for you. I'm not gonna worry you too much about the counting of it, the 16th third, like I said, as for the more intermediate advanced lessons. But what we got here is a snare drum falling just before beat three. One, two, a three, and four. One, and two, and a three, and four. One, and two, and a three, and. It's not falling exactly in between the hi-hats. One, two, and three, and four. It's one, two, a three, and four. The right hand there was the same tempo each time, same rate, except that snare drum moved closer to beat three. One, two, a three, and four. One, two, a three, and four. One, two, a three, and four. And one, and two. And I'm sort of improvising with the bass drum. Adding an extra one there in the same sort of place, the uh of um, beat four. One, two, three, and four. A one, 
two, three, and four. So you can put it at the end of the bar instead. Um, so lots, lots of cool variations there. And of course, going back to all the previous bass drum examples, you can play them all now with that extra snare drum note on the uh of two or the uh of four, for example. And then you've got even more combinations to have a go at. So finally, let's hear these two drum beats played with the Met. So there you go. I really hope you enjoyed that and found it useful and you're able to take something away from it. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson where I also give you a free 90 minute video course showing you how to read drum music as well. So you'll be able to take these sheets and be able to understand them and then be able to take it further later in your playing as well. Reading music is a really useful skill by the way. And then also on the same page, the link below, you can also sign up for my free email drum lessons where I show you, uh, I send you videos and charts and all kinds of cool stuff. Loads of beginner stuff as well. And you can unsubscribe anytime, so there's no pressure or anything. And what I recommend you do, just one final time, I think it's really important I mention it one more time, is to try and mix these beats up. They're cool on their own, and you might find some music, a lot of songs just have one drum beat in it being repeated throughout the entire section, the entire verse, the entire course. But most of the time, a lot of songs have combinations of different drum beats. So try to put these together. Don't worry too much about mixing the right hand pattern up, but certainly try to mix up the bass drum pattern and feel free to take an idea from one bar and to kind of add it to another bar and mix it up. With this, with these, two, with these 10 drum beats, you've got all the ingredients, like I said, to make the perfect drum soup. So if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com. Go over to my website, check out all the video lessons I've got available to you over there. If you want, you can um, join my Facebook page. That's a great place to make any song suggestions you might have. And also my free YouTube videos as well. If you type into the comments of any of those, some suggestions and other people get to vote on songs. Because that's what I do this for. This is what I do Drums of Word for, is teach you how to play actual songs. So. Email me, robertdrumsaword.com if you've got any questions. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.